Linux Mint 21 came out very, very recently. And rather than doing a full deep dive review because of the fact that there's some changes, but not many changes, I thought what might be useful is for those of you cruising around the internet looking for what to do after you have freshly installed Linux Mint, Linux Mint doesn't hold your hand too much. And so I might throw my hat into the ring with 10 things you can do after installing Mint. This is gonna be dealing with the Cinnamon desktop. Obviously, if you've picked another edition, not all of these are going to apply, but I wanna get through these as quickly as possible. And this is based off what I would do with my desktop. And hopefully you can take some of these things and apply them to your own situations. Links in the description uh, for some of the things that I mentioned and be aware of the time codes as well if you wanna jump around. Let's get into it. So first thing you're gonna notice is obviously the welcome screen. And for now, we're going to dismiss it entirely because we need, to, we need to get down to the important business of making sure that we've got our updates sorted. Now, the update manager is very, very useful. Uh, it's one of the best tools that Mint has going for it. And at the end of the day, you're gonna want to make sure that your system is freshly updated out of the box. Now, when it comes to accessing these updates, you need to make sure that the mirror is more local to where you are, because that means you're gonna get faster update speeds from the servers. Uh, so, Linux Mint will prompt you, do you want to switch to a local mirror? You say yes, give it your root password and away it'll go. It will present you with a list of mirrors and it will sort them out, rank them based on speed. The AARnet mirror is pretty good for where I am here in Australia. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to say, okay, it's going to update the cache for me and then we'll be away and ready to update. Now, it also is worth mentioning that with the uh, new Linux Mint 21 release, uh, we do have a few new improvements and I'll quickly mention them here while we're waiting for this to go. First of all, we do have a new Bluetooth uh, manager and this relies on the uh, Bloomin app and then the Blues backend as opposed to what they were using before. Apparently this is just to improve the quality of Bluetooth connections across a myriad of devices and desktops. Also, the window manager known as Muffin has undergone a lot of rework to make it more suitable for, uh, for modern hardware setups and also more compatible with a lot of the display stack that lives underneath a lot of the, um, the Mutter window manager from which it is a fork. So uh, that means better performance for window animation and overall a better, more stable experience. And it also means that a lot of the windows are themed better because they're not juggling between an old theming style and a new one. They use a, the same theming style across all the windows now. So you get these delightful rounded borders on the top of the windows and really smooth shadows. Okay, back to updates. Also do check out Linux kernels, because if you're watching this video uh, several months or years from now, these Linux Mint releases hang around for a long time and updating the kernel can unlock all kinds of extra capability when it comes to the hardware that you might be running. The LTS versions of Ubuntu, they usually ship with a, a kernel that is relatively current, but stable at the time. So Linux Mint 21 series is based off a kernel, the 5.15 kernel. And currently as of July, August of 2022, that is a relatively current kernel, but there are more current ones uh, and there will be more current ones out there by the time perhaps you get to this video. So definitely check in with the kernel update section here in Linux Mint because they probably will have uh, more up-to-date kernels that you'll be able to pick from uh, as those kernels become released due to Ubuntu's hardware enablement uh, program. So definitely check in there. All right. We're gonna install these updates and we're gonna come back when they're done. Matter of fact, while we're waiting, I'm gonna show you one of the other new features of uh, Linux Mint 21 is the little cog that lives down the bottom here. Uh, now, prior to, uh, in previous Linux Mint releases, they had a little icon that would show up here, just like this one for the update manager. But if the system was doing something else in the background and you didn't know about it, there wouldn't usually be any indicator that your system was doing anything. So as of, the 21 release, they now have a little processes indicator that if the system is doing something in the background, it'll let you know down in the toolbar. All right, so once you have the system up to date and you've rebooted, it's now time for us to talk about snapshots. One of the things that the Linux Mint team does fantastically, and they've actually taken on under their own wing with uh, Linux Mint 21 is snapshots or backups for your system. Think of this kind of like Time Machine on Mac OS or uh, all the built-in Windows backup tool on Windows. Time Shift does a fantastic job at 
integrating and rolling back and forth between uh, different updates as they become available. And with recent changes, they've also made sure that you won't max out your, uh, your hard drive space with backups. Uh, Time Shift will actually manage that a little bit more sanely than what it did in the past. So especially with the R-Sync version, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. You wanna set up a snapshot folder using Time Shift so that if anything goes wrong from now on, we can easily jump back into whatever um, version was last working well for us. All right, number four, now it's time to talk about drivers. Uh, Linux Mint also has a fantastic tool to manage your drivers. Most times, most things will be detected out of the box, but especially if you're running an NVIDIA graphics card, like I am, even though it's an ancient one, you will need to jump in here and install those drivers manually. Now, it used to be in some distros that it would do this automatically during the distros install, but I would recommend leaving it till once you've got the system already installed and in installed the driver after the fact and it's important that you have those snapshots going already so that if you do screw something up in the driver install it doesn't normally happen but even if it does you can roll it back to when the driver was working properly okay now we get to the fun bit number five let's time it's time to personalize this thing so we're going to change our desktop wallpaper i'm going to change the accent color of the desktop because i'm not really a huge fan of green you can come in here and change the theme of the cinnamon desktop or the icons or the colors or the shell or you can jump back to the welcome app and choose an accent color that applies for the entire desktop, which is what I'm going to do. I kind of like this really dark blue color and I'll leave it in the light theme for now. Already, that's looking better. But I wanna make a few other changes. First of all, because I'm on a 1080p display and I am on a 15.6 inch screen, uh, the fonts are a little small for my liking. So I usually crank them up to 1.1 scaling just to give them a little more room to breathe. Now what I wanna do is I wanna change a few of these key applets and widgets and desklets and what other other lits you can think of. So first of all, I wanna change the battery monitor to actually display the percentage of the battery. So if you go down to the battery monitor and then display percentage or time remaining, whatever floats your boat, you can now see that the battery monitor will show that percentage for us. When it comes to exploring the key widgets or little bits of extra functionality you wanna put on the desktop, they're categorized in three different places. First of all, you have applets, which are the things that live on the panel. And you can go ahead and download a bunch more of these, which are pretty cool. For example, the Cine menu is a fantastic alternative main menu to the provided Mint menu. It gives a more icon-driven menu as opposed to a tiered list. But the one that I am going to recommend is the Draw and also the Pomodoro Timer. Now, what I like about both of these is that Pomodoro Timer is a fantastic just little productivity tool. So you can add that one to the bottom here, but also the Draw adds a, uh, a place that you can chuck all of the applets that you don't commonly use to try to clean this space up a bit. For example, I don't really need the printer there all the time. If I open up the panel edit mode, I can go ahead and start throwing these little applets into the drawer. So you can now see that the printer icon is now hiding behind this little arrow. Just helps clean up the desktop a little bit and you can throw more of those in there if you're unlikely to use them. Second place you can look is desklets and these are basically just little things that live on your desk, kind of like widgets. Recommendations are the weather desklet if you like seeing what's going on with the weather at any given time and also Google Calendar if you're in the Google ecosystem and you like being able to see what calendar appointments you have coming up next. And the third area of personalization that you can really get carried away in is the extensions. This adds extra functionality to the Cinnamon desktop. So the two extensions that I'd love to be able to recommend are Transparent Panels and G-Tile, the two at the top of the list here. Uh, in previous versions of Cinnamon, these do work fantastically, but due to the fact that Cinnamon 5.4 newly released here is still new. A lot of these extensions have yet to be updated. So hold off on these for now, but if you do wanna go find them later, highly recommended. They make the desktop look pretty cool. And G-Tile gives you a lot of window tiling opportunities rather than just the bog standard uh, left and right and full screen, etc. Finally, I'd recommend jumping in and having a look at the hot corners and enabling the ones that you want. For example, I would like to have all my workspaces in the top left and all of my windows in the bottom right. And don't forget about Redshift, which uh, shifts the tone of the screen overall, uh, depending on where you are in the world, to a more friendly uh, 
color for sleeping. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it off for now just so the video doesn't look weird. And that will do us in terms of personalization for now. Time to talk about number six, use those web apps. And what I mean by that is that there is a tool that Linux Mint includes, uh, it's just called web apps. All you need to do is copy and paste the address of the web app that you wanna use. You can choose a different icon as well. I'll see if they actually have one. They do, fantastic. And now I will have that showing up in my menu as a web app which means that I can find it really easily with a keyboard launcher that I will show you in a moment. Queue up as many as these as you see fit and then get ready to install some packages because number seven, it's time to get our gaming situation sorted. Now, for those of you who are big into the gaming scene, uh, then all you're gonna wanna do, at least for the start, is install Steam, Lutris, Game Hub, and potentially the Heroic Game Launcher as well. You can find links to all of these in the description. Uh, installing Steam is like the easiest thing in the world nowadays. You literally just come into the software manager, give it time to generate and search for Steam and it'll come up. You hit install and away you go. Uh, the other ones do have a little bit more complicated installs depending on the app. And obviously you'll need to be able to sign in to those services uh, if and when you need to. But Steam as a starting place, really easy to install, go ahead and do that. Now the next thing I like to sort out is sorting out my cloud file synchronization service. Now there's a few ways you can go about doing this depending on what service you're with. If you use the Google Drive service and you're in that ecosystem, you can actually integrate that directly in with the Cinnamon desktop using the online accounts section in system settings. So if you go into the system settings and you have a look here under the online accounts section, uh, you can actually log in with your Google account and your Google Drive, Google Calendar, and all of that will be integrated directly in with the system, which is really nice. But if you're like me and you use something else, you're gonna have to go and find that yourself. Now, the good news is for me, I use, I have a Synology NAS uh, locally here on the premises. And so I use Synology Drive as my main cloud storage uh, option. Now, wonderfully for me, it comes available as a flat pack that's very easy to install and it just runs down here on the tray. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to ask me to install a bunch of flat pack stuff because it's one of the first flat packs that I'm installing. And it is also worth mentioning at this point that when, you go, when we get to step 10 and you install all of your apps that you wanna use, uh, depending on who you are and what you like, try and use the Flatpak versions because they're gonna be more up to date. And especially as Linux Mint rolls on and starts to age, your apps will continue to stay up to date. So try and prioritize in the software center, uh, try and prioritize ones that come from Flatpak as opposed to uh, ones that come from the native Linux Mint repositories. More on that later. Now for services like pCloud or Mega, you're gonna have to go to their respective websites and download them yourself. But when it comes to other services like OwnCloud or NextCloud, obviously there's gonna be fantastic integration for those uh, available because it's open source and it's beautiful. So now that we have all that going, it's probably time to go and take another snapshot with time shift just to make sure that it's got a quick snapshot of the system the way that we like it. And you can also jump into the system reports to have a look and see if there's anything that needs addressing or that you still haven't done yet. Things like installing missing language packs so that you can download uh, the help documentation for different apps is a good thing to do if you get around to it. Now, finally, number nine, I did wanna loop back around to the online accounts and say that if you did wanna set up and integrate specifically with a online calendar, then uh, and have it pop up here in the uh, toolbar and synchronize with those events, then go ahead and sign in with your online accounts there and you'll be able to have access to those features. They do give you a little bit of a breakdown here, which I think is super useful about what features you get where. Uh, so can't recommend that you look at that enough and make sure that your online service that you use can actually talk to Mint. And if not, uh, then I guess you'll have to figure something else out. All right, final step, go ahead and just install all the other apps you need. Uh, one thing that I do like to do and that I'm going to do right here just at the end of the video is, uh, is I really do like a competent keyboard launcher. For me, my competent keyboard launcher of choice has been U Launcher for some time. I usually tie that to the alt space uh, uh, keyboard binding so that uh, no matter what's going on, I can jump in and tap the alt space and launch whatever file, folder, application, whatever it is that I need to do. I can't stress how uh, performant Linux Mint feels 
uh, in version 21. It'll be even better when all of the cinnamon extensions and spices, as they're known, are fully supported on the new version of cinnamon, uh, because this desktop is fantastic, and I hope these 10 things give you something to do now that you've got your own version of Mint running. One other little recommendation that I want to give as a bit of a shout out to all of those who have hung around this long. Wonderwall is a fantastic little app that manages, downloads and keeps uh, fantastic wallpapers for you to cycle through on your desktop. So if you go back into the software manager, have a look into Flatpak and install Wonderwall, uh, you'll have a fantastic selection of high quality, highly rated, highly sought after wallpapers that you can see all around the internet on different tech channels. Uh, so that one's for free. Thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next one.